Mm-hmm. Come on, open up. Good morning. Good morning. Wow, well, I must be early. You are. <laughs> well, you just came to socialize. There we go. Has anybody heard about Kimberly? Um, I, I haven't heard anything since that one. I've exchanged a few emails with her. Her spirits seem good and she's home. Oh, she is. Okay. I sent her an email, but I didn't hear back. So I just wondered. Morning. morning, Roberta. Good morning, George. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? Good. I like your red hat. <laughs> keep, keeps my head warm. We keep the temperature down to, to save energy. Yeah, right. And my bald head gets, my bald head gets well, cold. It, it's, it's very Christmassy, so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Even if it doesn't have a white top knot. Oh, that's right. <laughs> So, Roger. Good morning, hey, Roger. Roger. Hey, Roberta. How are you doing, Cynthia? Doing okay. How about you? Hanging in there. <laughs> what can I say? Yeah. <laughs> what else? What else can you do? Why is that not? Some nice work this week. To let you all know, um, I've received uh, multiple phone calls to change the venue of this class so that it's open to the entire Renaissance Society forever. So far, oh, I've kidding. remained. Really? So far, I have no. a deaf mute. No, no, no. I'm not changing. No, no. no. I vote no. No, yeah, no problem. I don't know how I you could control no. it. I yeah, I vote no, because how would you control what's going on with, you know, 80 people? Or... Well, Mary, Mary posed the question. Okay, we're a core group of 19, right? Started off as 16, we're now at 19. Um, what if we opened it up for auditing for the lesson part, but the smug mug part was still you know, private. And I it's thought private. about that a little bit. I said, I said, I thought about that and I went, no, because then how did the, you know, we give them a lesson to, to, to the, the, everybody at large, but then it starts to become resentful because once we get back into non zoom and we're meeting in a room, what do we do then yeah. with these audited yeah. people that we tell them, no, sorry, you're not part of the class. So this is just, this is going down a rabbit hole. I don't want to go. Right. No, no well, the, the class, the class I'm going to teach is, um, it's limited to 30. I mean, I'm not going to have 150 people in a book group. So uh, I agree with you. I think it, there are certain classes that need to be limited. Yeah, I've been in some Spanish classes that are, you know, 10 or 15 people, and that's all they want. And cause that's, yeah. that's the way the class functions well. Well, in our case, the reason for trying to keep it originally 16, and we real, we learned that we can, we're fairly efficient, so we could go up to 19 now, um, and I hope no more, uh, is, is that it's the time that it takes in presenting everybody's work is really mm -hmm. what limits it, because my lessons are 20, 25 minutes, you know, it's consistently. So a good day. You know, so to me... <laughs> I try not to go too much longer than that, but yeah, but typically it's, it's the, the open discussion that I don't try to move along too quickly because if, if somebody has got a picture that 
everybody's talking about. I don't want to cut that good discussion off. So right. I'm thinking, and I continue to tell them no. So I'm hearing a consensus here or a unanimous vote. No, we're, we're this is it. Okay. Yep. That's yeah. You want a show of hands? All right. Late, so. <laughs> <laughs> morning, Bob. Good morning, George, and everybody. Hi, Bob. You, how are How are you all? You had on a mask when you first signed on. What What have you been up to? Oh, my grandson is here, so. Ah, uh, uh, okay. We take precautions when he's here. Okay. Keep the fan going, and it's too cold to open the doors. We tried that. Yeah. Rose to death. <laughs> Frost outside this morning. Yeah, uh, the, yeah, the dog was, would walk. Was, yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, no, it's cool. <clears throat> so it's getting harder and harder to go outside to take pictures these days. There, I think something like what eleven hundred cases yesterday in. Yeah. The hospital uh, for Sacramento area. Yeah. So, yeah. Good morning, Claire. Good morning. Out. Is it cold in your house, George? Yes. Cool. You look a little orange today, Roger. That was rude. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you just do a forward comb over, you'd be really stylish. <laughs> This is the dining room wall. I'm sitting at the table in the dining room. Because oh, you're your the green screen. Kitchen. Your office this is too is cold. Oh, I haven't been out of my office in three weeks. It's freezing. So that's the painting behind me. I'm just sitting here and giving you a tour of the kitchen. That's beautiful. Yeah. So who are we missing? We're missing a bunch of mics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, Steve. Are you muted? Steve's muted, yeah. Okay. Hi, John. There's John. Good morning. And Rita. Good morning. Good morning. And Mike. Good morning. Here's mic number one. Steve, John, Mary, Rita. Nine six zero three three six. But yeah. there's an interesting piece in the New York Times this morning on street photography. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah they they yeah, sent three I saw or that. four of their photographers out on the streets of New York to. Um, Shoot street stuff. It's pretty interesting because they talk about what they were trying to accomplish and all. I enjoyed it anyway. Yeah, my Good. my niece sent it to me. Yeah. There's a uh, meetup group from the uh, Sierra Camera Club, and it's free, and it's called uh, t it's tomorrow uh, with Valerie Jordan on travel photos, mm -hmm. and. Um, it seems very interesting for those of you who travel a lot. Uh, I, you know, it's all about taking different types of travel photos other than the standard iconics and uh, tourist photos. So I'm looking forward to seeing that, but you can probably find it on Meetup under the Sacramento Camera Club and it's free and it might be of interest to you guys, yeah. anyone. Thank you, that's good. Yeah. Valerie Jardine is, I highly recommend her. She is uh, extremely uh, talented, a very good instructor. So, and she will teach you something very different than just taking that, yet again another picture of a church someplace in Europe. So that's good. It's also good. Yeah, I've put a lot of her workshops, well, not the workshops, but shortened versions of them on the web. And I just finished watching her piece last week on contemplative photography. And it was really good, um, very well done. It was um, a webinar and she has them about once a month. A lot of, 
So it's worth looking at her website, see what she's up to. She's constantly busy. Georgiana um, had a question or comment. No, I was doing the same thing. I saw the same webinar. It was very good. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I did too. I did too. And which website is that on? Her it's website? It's her uh, website. Valerie Jardin's website. Oh, okay. J-A-R-D-I-N, I believe. Spell that, Raj. J-A-R-D-I-N. Hey, hey, Bob. Yes. I got uh, a, uh, I was just looking that up, and I found a Sierra Camera Club or Sacramento Photography Group. Yes. Do you know what you do? It's the Sierra Camera Club Sierra of Sacramento. Camera Club. Of Sacramento, yes. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, one other thing uh, I have been uh, thinking about, and I spoke to Roger and Mary Ellen about, was um, creating a photo book <laughs> for the class um, that contained your favorite photo for the semester. Uh, one photo each, and that would be on one page, and next to it would be whatever you wanted to write about that photo, whatever you like best about it. You put technical information, whatever you want to write. And uh, it would be a blur book that would be available for you to, if you wish to, purchase on the web, on Amazon, um, and um, uh, the hard copy. But I would be willing to uh, work on that process, work on that project. If anyone, you know, if the majority of the class or enough people in the class wanted to do that and end up with uh, a book for, uh, you know, with their print in it, as well as everyone else's. Um, I think uh, Mary Elliott has uh, uh, volunteered to maybe help write the instructions on how to do it. And um, hopefully Roger will write the preface to the book. Um, it does not have to be, well, I guess it, it deals with the class, but you don't, anyway, you can write anything you want about it. And if, if people are interested in that, I'd be willing to take that on um, with some help from a few other people. Uh, Remember so, we did that, how many years ago we did one of those? Years right, ago. Allison, Formed by Roger that you had Steve Barber uh, yeah. do, do it. Steve was a friend of mine. Steve died last year um, uh, of a fast onset of Parkinson's disease. Uh, um, and and st I was in the same like a users group as Steve. And that's a far more controlled book. And, it, you know, uh, they control what it kind of has to be, you know, taken with a Leica camera and blah, blah, blah. Um, but I think ours would be a little bit different than that. You could submit anything from the semester that you like the best. Uh, and um, well, anyway, it's a, an experience. If you've had it and you didn't like it, I won't do it. That's fine with me. I, believe me, it's less work. So, uh, but I am willing to, to take that on if people are interested, but I don't want to do it if people are not. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, yeah that'd I be think great. it sounds like I'm fun. I'm interested. Okay, sounds yeah. like a lot of people would be interested. Um, mm -hmm. It may take a, a few dollar contribution to, because I think we want to uh, get a PDF uh, file of it so that you can see it uh, before we publish in case your image did not turn out like you wanted it to, uh, too dark, too light, uh, whatever. Um, and I think the only requirement would be that you fit into the page size that we, or the image size that we allow, and that you do all the pre-processing. I'm not going to touch your images. I'm not going to touch the size. I'm not going to touch anything. I'm just going to throw it into the Lightroom blurb module and, and throw it up there. And that's why we would, I think you have to pay for that first PDF image uh, from blurb. And then um, when you buy it, I think, uh, if, if we put it at a little bit of a raised price, we can give it to the uh, uh, Renaissance Society or the Sacramento State, whatever they contribute to with Sacramento State. So it'd be a way of us contributing to that too, if that's okay with everybody. 
Uh, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Perfect. Well, um, Bob, I can uh, just launch a quick little poll here if you want, then we can get a count on. Who That'd be great. To... Oh, thanks, Mike. Yeah. Chris. Oh, Chris. Right. Thank you. Sorry, relaunch. Oh. Sorry, I pushed the wrong button. We're gonna. There you go. Cool. You in the poll? All right, we've got eighty-five percent of you voted. Everybody's yes so far. I'd like to challenge the vote. <laughs> I, think, I think George voted at twenty-five times. Yeah, I think someone. <laughs> Can we have a recount, please? <laughs> Bye. Uh, all right. Paper ballot. I we think can have a recount, but you have to pay for it. Yes, there you go. <laughs> so we got 100% okay. of people said yes. So, Okay, we'll uh, get that out. I'd like to say come. something. Uh, I came in in a meeting late, and I voted yes. Uh, Thank you, Mike. I guess that's pretty standard, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I send your thousand dollars into Roger for. <laughs> <laughs> if you could find a thousand dollars, I'll split it with you. <laughs> All right, we'll get we'll try to do that before the next semester starts, so that we have something to do in between semesters. Thank um, you. If we can. Uh, talking about timing, talking about timing of semesters, uh, I believe we're going to start. When is when is Zoom rendezvous? End of January. So we start roughly around that time. The so eighth, we'll be the first of January. The eighth of February is the first day, the first day for uh, classes. Yeah, I have us. As, I I had it on our schedule as February tenth, but if you want to change yeah, that, Roger, it, just let me know. February tenth is yeah, that's a Wednesday. We could start either that or the third, either one, and. Without even further discussion, I'm assuming Zoom is our format for this next semester. Probably. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, there's not going well, to be I will see if I, I will see if I have time in my busy schedule these days, as I sit in my house and watch, binge watch Boys and um, what's that other great show? Trapped. I don't know if you guys have seen that, but that's a great yeah. show. <laughs> Roger, do you know yet what your uh, program, your assignments are going to be next semester? You're asking Roger, right? Yeah. yeah. Did you um, hear it, Roger? I got an echo here. I'm sorry. But do you know what the well, program one. is going to be next semester? Somewhat. I have it in my head so far. Would you like to share it? <laughs> no. <laughs> No, I think, no, in reality, it, okay, in reality, I think I'm going to go, uh, because of Zoom, I kind of kept the lessons less independent of art, or less dependent upon art, but I think we've sort of figured out that we can do that, so I may go back to more um, really heavy-duty art stuff. I'm looking at neoclassical revival ideas and things like that, maybe, I don't know yet. I just bought a book at, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, at the uh, Crocker, and uh, this but this person uh, took uh, and from every country in the world had a, a portrait of a woman, in all different types of of, mm -hmm. of uh, uh, portraits, and they're, they're, it's really spectacular. So I would suggest that that be could be something to do. Uh, Find women? the book and hold it up onto your screen. Yeah. Uh, where the heck did I put it? Oh, I know. Women is always a difficult subject. For men, it this? is. <laughs> <laughs> How about just portraits? <laughs> yeah, just for portraits in general. We did that yeah. one year. Yeah, we did. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah that we were good. downtown. That was yeah. Fun. Yeah, I've, I've been thinking about that. Hey, Bob. Yes. We wouldn't be submitting those photos until the month of January, I presume. You'll, you'll prompt us on what. 
I lost you, but yes, uh, I I can't. Sorry. Can um, hold it closer. Can I can I talk for a minute? Time. Yes, of course. Yeah. Um, Bob and I'll get together and organize it, and we'll send you out information on what to do. Okay. Good. And and Claire, are you saying that you're going to be busy in December and wouldn't be able to do it in December, or? Yeah, I, well, I, I, I don't know. If you just give me a date, I can't see any reason to. Okay. Yeah, I mean, whatever. But just just let me know. Of course. As, uh, yeah. as I understand yeah. this, we're well, looking we'll back over our now. photographs of the past year or past semester and choosing from that. Um, I would do it over the past semester. Is that what we talked yeah. about, Mary? I think. Is so that, this past semester. Is that is that because there's a specific theme we're supposed to be? I mean, in other words, if we're not, if we're trying to have any appeal at all to a general public, what would be the cohesion in that book? None. The, the point is not the general public. The point is to share our photos with each other, I think. And and the we what what Bob and I talked about originally was um, we've done some fantastic work this last semester, and I think we could all choose one shot that would be um, exemplary from what we've done, and you just choose your favorite shot, and then we'll put it together. And we're, and we're also talking about uh, some written, Bob and I think talked about doing, having, you know, a paragraph or an explanation or something about your shot, a written piece to it. I, didn't we, Bob? Yes, we did. And it may be something we want to do at the end of every semester. It won't be a thick book, obviously, and that will keep the cost down, hopefully. Um, and I guess there'll be different formats. I think Blur provides soft cover, hard cover, hard cover with wrap are these uh, are the three formats that they offer. So depending on where you want to put it, like you want to have an accumulation on your bookshelf or you, and start on your coffee table and then put that on the bookshelf and next semester have a, another on your you know, coffee table and then move that. You, you would have a nice little collection of the works of everybody for the semester if that's what you wanted to do. And we can see how the first one turns out. If we, you know, and we just sort of pick semester because it, it is cohesive in that respect, Claire. I mean, it, it really is uh, based on the things that we've been learning and practicing this semester as opposed to combining them all together. Um, I don't know, it was just sort of a, seemed like a good idea, right, Mary, uh, to do the semester. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I like and I think the shot system has been exemplary. Uh, you've just all done wonderful work. And I know everybody can come up with something that's um, outstanding. So anyway. I can come up with someone else's picture that's outstanding. But yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can I pick someone else's besides mine? Are we calling no. this, are we calling this the, co the, COVID, the COVID photo shoot? <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. The pictures, as Mary said, have been fantastic. And under the conditions that we all are, I think that that says a whole lot about, you know, expanding what you can do with your photography in a limited environment, what you can see, what you can create. Yeah. I, I've, I've found it very challenging in that respect. Yes. So maybe, maybe um, we should, maybe we should. Um, I, think, I think too if. Instead of our own. Go ahead. Well. Maybe maybe what we ought to do is pick each other's photos, which we think are the best out of what they did, instead of our own. <laughs> that just that's just that's too easy. That's too easy. I think, um, I, I, think, I think what you could do, what you could do is ask. Uh, maybe you could uh, make a quick email to everybody of three photos that of your own that you like and ask for feedback on them. Which oh, one do you like best? Which one? No. I mean, I did that with my photos anyway. So I'm mean, going to just do that informally. Mm -hmm. We can do that. Or um, my idea is self editing is one of the hardest things mm -hmm. to do. Yes. And Absolutely. if you have to pick one of your photos, that's a really good lesson to learn. Mm -hmm. And, you know, don't rely on what other people think. You know, this is your photo, these are your emotions. Find the best one. And that's a really hard thing to do. And, uh, doing that is something that 
you know, I've got 180,000 photos in my Lightroom, okay? So it's like, I'm a really terrible self editor. There are even photos of the inside of my camera bag and photos of the street <laughs> as I'm walking. So um, I would sort of go against asking other people's opinion. I don't think that really matters. It's what matters to you. And the self editing process is a very difficult one. And I well, think there, the more we do that. And that's a good lesson. I think that's a, that's a good. I, I think that's, that, that's very a good positive. lesson. However, there isn't an author alive who doesn't submit to readers and workshopping to to help him get better. Now, I guess we can't improve our photos if we share them around. So, in that regard, it is different. Um, we do that in this class, though, right? We yes, share our right. photos. We, yeah, we do get other yeah. opinions. So that's the classroom thing, but. The self-editing is, um, boy, it's, it's not easy. And a good good thing, I don't know, that that was my opinion. So I don't wanna, if it, we can do another poll. Yeah, I just have a question, uh, Bob and Mary. Uh, would we choose just the ones that we've posted on Smug Mug or any of that we've taken and maybe we decided later, uh -huh. oh, I kind of like that one better or I'd like to tweak it a little bit or. That's a I good think it's idea. Up to you. That's a good anything you've yeah. taken this semester that's related to what we've done in class. I think that's okay. a great idea. I think that's good. Yeah. 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 If it's going to be a class project, it ought to be related to class. Yeah. Not, yeah. Not an yeah, odd right. shot. I just meant we don't have aren't restricted to the ones we've already posted up and said, oh, for that week, that was the one I liked, but because I may have changed my mind or I may want to tweak it a little bit after feedback from people. So but it should be related to the class. It shouldn't be one that you yeah. just took. No, no, outside. no. I'm not saying that. I'm saying the, the, yeah. the, yeah, the, class, the ones taken for the class. Because as all of us, you know, you take a lot and post one. So, yeah. That's true. Sounds good. Yeah. That makes the self-editing harder, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Years ago, Roberta and I took a class at Ollie. And one of the things that we did, and we did a uh, photo um, uh, a, a kind of a photo workshop with our garden club and that we had a we had a checklist of the things to look for in a good photo which was really helpful which I don't know what I did with mine but part of it had to do with composition part of it had to do with um, um, appropriate um, time frames different do you remember that Roberta what yeah that, that criteria yeah. was yeah, was yeah I don't remember when yeah. we were trying to judge other people's photos, we had these, these I think it was like five points. That we right, had. right. I think I have that sheet someplace, yes. But that would be helpful when you're looking at your own. Does it meet that requirement, you know, when you're looking at it and you able to cover all these points? Roger, there's an idea for next semester. What makes a good yeah. photograph? I, I think, uh, Rita, to answer your question, you know, if someone wants to do that, fine. I'm just going to make the book. No, um, I think the book is fine. I'm just, I was just kind of on the tail end of that, of what we had done, I thought was kind of interesting. So, I mean, you could do that yourself. You know, Good yeah. idea. Can one of you print that out and send it I'll around? See if I can, I'll see if I can find one. Because uh, it was it was part of a, a, we use it as part of a contest, too, yeah, that we, we had. It. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'll see if I, I don't know if I have it, but I'll, I'll find it. But, you know, it's just, it's good questions just to ask yourself when you're looking at your photos. Um, you know, trying to meet, trying to meet the challenge that, that Roger puts out. A lot of times, uh, my, as you'll see today, my photos don't necessarily represent what the, what the class lesson was. <laughs> it's whatever. I got on my camera. So just, um, to run yes. and I actually to tell you what and that's fine but uh, whatever you guys want to do but in talking to a couple of friends who do a lot of publishing the photo um, that will be printed in the book okay. the space that you have is going to be a square space mm. so if you oh, do a long that's... landscape it's going to be fairly thin if you do a very long portrait it's going to be very thin but if you have one that fits better into um, and uses as much space in the square space as you can, that's best because 
if I start to do multiple uh, 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 types of photo layouts in the book, that really makes the project exponentially harder. And so uh, just- why, uh, why square? Why square? Because it our... gives you equal dimensions on, on all sides. Uh, you know, I for years I've used um, uh, Blurb 7x7 seven seven, uh, book, and it's a nice little size. Um, so you might consider that. That would standardize everything, although the text would, you'd have to figure that out. Well, that's, it's sort of what Lightroom offers in its Blurb module. And mm -hmm. sure, you, I think you can do seven by seven on the book, but you still have to choose the layout of the picture and the layout of the page. And um, Mary and I will work out how to submit the images, whether they have to be JPEG or TIFF is better, whatever prints better, the DPI that you want your image on. And we can print the maximum DPI per the square. So if you want to uh, make a square picture, uh, that's fine. If you want to submit, as I said, landscape or portrait, it's going to be cut off uh, on the width or the height, uh, depending on what you submit. And it it's just makes it be, a lot easier. You're not going to crop it, though. You're just going to have extra white space, I assume. Correct. We are not oh. going to, I'm not going to crop it. I'm just going to throw it in there. So I'm just yeah. trying to keep this very simple. If I find out that it's very easy to uh, adjust a photo, uh, let's say that we can fit a photo that's X uh, DPI wide or X DPI tall, and I find that very easy to fit on the page somehow, that's great. I'll, I'll try to do that and I'll, we'll keep everybody informed. But I, from what I've heard from my different friends who publish, the square is where you, you can do it the most easily. Otherwise, you get into real, real difficult editing problems on the book itself in Lightroom. It's not that, that friendly in Lightroom in that respect. But the new CC may make it more friendly. I just don't know. Okay. All of our cameras uh, have an aspect ratio of three to two, same proportion as a slide. So that, that is typically what will fill the greatest amount of space in a square. So but if I can do three, automatically. Yeah. Right, if I can do three by two, either landscape or portrait, I'll do that. But you yeah. know, if I can do that easily, yeah. that's great. But I think a square, like you said, Roger, is uh, the best. I agree, format. square gives you the flexibility. Don't take another poll, Chris, because I think we'd have a change. To answer, <laughs> no, <maybe. laughs> no, I appreciate what you're doing, Bob, and this is, it's yeah. it's good information. I think what you do a little research on. To me, the the key is going to be where your your editing where your words are, because if you've got a square page, and you've got words somewhere, you don't want a square picture, right? You would want a two by three or three by two, depending on how you put your your text right is text I showing on the same page as the photo no no, no. oh it's on a separate page oh okay the photo yeah. on another so, so two pages all right never mind take back everything i said <laughs> so we'll come out with the parameters for that how it should be submitted uh so that it's easy to drop into lightroom That's um good. and uh i don't know how to do that we'll, we'll look at using a text editor like Notepad or something, cutting and pasting into something. I, I don't really know. A lot of people use Macs, a lot of people use PCs. So we wanna make it easy for you. Maybe we would use Google Docs, which everybody has access to if they have a Google account. Um, I think Bob, it'd just be as easy for you to just have them email it. You can cut, cut and paste out of an email. It's really Absolutely, simple. yeah. It's simple yeah. I and mean, you don't have to deal with anything, but. You know, they text you, they send you an email with the text and a copy of the picture and you're done. Okay. Chris, thank you. You can take care of the text portion. I appreciate the volunteering. I'd be happy to do that. <laughs> Just <Yeah>. kidding. <clears throat> so who are we missing? We're missing, G we have 16. We're missing Jean. Who else? Kim. Um, well, Kim, of course. How's Kim doing? 
I've she's, been she's usually, she's usually emails with her and her spirits have been good. She's usually in a I'm walker. Sorry, I was talking over somebody and I don't know. Yeah, she's usually in okay. a walker. Yeah. Is she home? Yes. 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 Okay. She's home. It, it, uh, George, how's your speech? Is it was it? Affected? I haven't haven't talked to her. Uh, we've only oh, exchanged okay. emails, and and <laughs> her sense of humor <clears throat> is intact. So I guess that's a, yes, <laughs> yes. I got something yeah. from her. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's been a half hour, Roger. I don't know if you want to start up or. Well, because I'm not doing a lesson, it, 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 the discussion is uh, good to. Good. Thank you. Good reminder. <laughs> Does everybody have a good Thanksgiving? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> pretty small. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty tiny. Yeah. Under Very different. <laughs> yeah. Very All different. one person. That was me. That was my Thanksgiving. <laughs> uh, yeah, we had double just, that size, Michael. Uh, so. Oh, yeah. Right. Two, yeah. <laughs> We didn't have turkey. We had we had uh, pheasant club ravioli. Oh, that Ooh. actually sounds good. Oh, they were good. Yeah, mm. and I made it made a cheesecake in the instant pot. Oh wow! Oh, was how was that? Fantastic! Oh, oh I gotta try that. I gotta try. Oh that. yeah, it was great. Yeah. We just lose somebody. Yeah, well, let's. Roger. Roger and Mary. Oh, oh Mary's back, but Mary's Roger's back. coming back on. There he is. Yeah, we had a, a, you just did a little turkey breast, which actually worked out great. And I didn't have this ton of turkey leftovers to deal yeah. with. <laughs> going, yeah. What do I do with this stuff on the third day? Yeah. I think I'm a I'm a, a heretic or anti-American or something, but I don't care for turkey. I don't so either. We, so we had a ham. Ah. Uh, so what are you going to have for Christmas? Ham. Um, Duck. Either ham or um, because it'll be really small, I might do a standing rib. Ooh. Oh, that sounds good. That sounds really yeah. good. I've done that. I think we'll all, we'll all come over and share it with you. Yeah. <laughs> do you offer curbside delivery? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just drive up, roll down the window, and you can pass us the plate. <laughs> well, ribs in the Instapot are good too. Yeah, it'll depend are on they? who gives me money for Christmas so before oh. the, the meat. Yeah. <laughs> Would it help Chris, pay your heating um, bill? <laughs> 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 we actually keep it down to conserve energy, not so much to conserve the bill. It just seems like, you know, you dress a little more warmly and you don't have to use as much gas or electricity. So uh, it seems like nothing to do. Yeah. So I wear, Chris, I'm going to just restart. Okay. 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 <clears throat> All right. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Wonderful. That one's mine. That's, I love that's this. beautiful. That's really I love beautiful. this photo. This yeah. is the one I wanted to put in the book for me. <laughs> <laughs> for a price, you could ask her. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Cynthia, how did you do this? Um, well, I, I'm not sure of the exact name of the tree, but these are red leaves and they're the back side of them. And they're very, they're almost whitish on the back. So they were on the sidewalk. Um, all three of them were turned over and then I just shot them straight down. Um, is that what you mean? How did I do well, it? yeah, I was wondering if those were close to their um, actual colors, or if, or if a lot of this was done by overexposing or bringing up whites or something. That's all. I did, yeah, I did edit that because the um, the darker shades that you can see in the leaves were actually um, kind of a, a reddish or almost pinkish, of you know, faint mm. pinkish color. So I did. Um, bring up the whites and I mean the problem with shooting light art that I was finding is that um, you know you bring all these things if you bring up the contrast you're going to bring in darks because that's how that 
works. So it was, I had to kind of go back and forth quite a bit so that it had an overall light look to it. So I increased the exposure and the whites. And you got so much detail. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. So Cynthia, yeah. it's just laying on the, on the sidewalk. That's the texture behind it is the sidewalk. Yeah, I did take out a few, some debris that was on the sidewalk that was much darker. There was a few sticks and, mm -hmm. um, you know, just stuff because it had, I went up to Grass Valley one day to just look at the colors and um, this was just out in front of somebody's house. <laughs> and the, the water was on the leaves like that already? Yeah, because it was raining. So it, or it had rained that day or the night before, I guess, up there. So um I, yeah, I didn't add any water. Wow. It wasn't a, it wasn't a stage shot. I just walked along and I, I looked down when all the leaves are down there and uh -huh. I thought, wow, that looks kind of cool. So I, really, I did take out a few d little bits that I thought were too dark that were drawing my eye. I really love all the different textures and mm -hmm. the way the water mm -hmm. drops are on the leaves. The composition is great as well. Yeah. Did you yeah, I, arrange it? It was lined up just like that. I thought it worked out well. All the luck goes to the talented. Oh, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, doing this assignment, I was immediately drawn to everything with high contrast, you know, so exactly <laughs> what we weren't supposed to look for. You know, I think that, that from all of our training that we've had these last few years, we start to notice things. And the fact that you actually noticed the composition of those leaves that were on the sidewalk, if that's, I mean, you didn't place them that way, you saw it. And then you knew it was a photograph. And I think that's a, um, it's a compliment to our abilities to see better than we used to. Yeah, I, if I had tried to move those, the water would have, uh, or water droplets wouldn't have stayed intact. Or I guess some people stage those kind of photographs. They bring a little squirt bottle with them, but I wasn't that prepared. I didn't do that. Lovely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great That's job. really beautiful. Yeah. It's a In, wall hanger. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, absolutely. A whole you more car. You say wall hanger or wall banger? <laughs> you know, whatever you want, George. <laughs> Cynthia, what strikes me about this picture uh, in terms of its power is the fact that it is absolutely clean. There's, there's no distraction. You took all the twigs away, which, which I think helped it a lot, big time. And I guess the other thing that makes it clean is the fact that the tonality is very limited in range. And that, that to me makes it more powerful. It's, what I wondered about is whether this fit the Grisale assignment more so than light art. Although I think I'm not, I think I'm not dark or I, I might not be dark enough on this one to fit that range that we were doing. You know, I think it's just a, a, a shade of difference between the two, if I can be corny. It, you know, I, the, both of them try to do about the same thing. Brazil's just darker a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I started with that because it's a little easier to achieve. Uh, it's difficult to do light art like this and not have it blow out the detail. So uh, this is... This, this shot you managed to keep, retain the veins and, and so on, so that's in the leaves and so on, so that's good. But Grisale, you, I would call this light art versus Grisale, but I think the distinction is, is not important. Mm. The, um, for me, the, the Grisale is a little bit moot. I mean, when I'm, th when I'm trying to do a Grisale, the, the um, the mood is more uh, troubled or uh, Griselle you can kind of get into a more atmospheric moody kind of a shot where this is just very I mean it's very light yeah it, it's, yeah, it's, it's so, so it's true Mary. 
Brazil yeah, it, will be either sad or melancholy or yeah, uh, you know, kind of more negative uh, emotions. This one does not possess that. Yeah, the simplicity is what I think is really st strikes me as as what is strong. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. By the way, hi Kim. Oh, Kim's here. Oh, hey. Yeah. Hey. You're muted. Hi. Kim, Kim, you are muted, so we can't. Say hello, Kim. How can you see her? There she is. But, hey, there she oh, is. Oh, Kim. Okay. There you are. Glad to be here. Yeah. Oh, my God. Glad to have you here. Nice this to see great. you. Yeah. Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Chris? Yes. Yeah. Next. This is mine too. It's the one I didn't like as much. It's very frustrating to try to get. <laughs> I don't know. It was, uh, I guess I should report that my husband had nothing to do with this one and he's still alive, <laughs> but it's <laughs> cellophane. Um, oh. <laughs> it's, it's backlit. When he saw me with it, he said, oh my God, <laughs> what, what are you gonna do to me? I, I think it's really hard to post your worst photo. And I take it this is your, your worst photo? Well, of the ones that I shot for this assignment, yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't care for this one as much because it was very hard to, to edit. It was very hard to get anything that looked like a decent composition. I had a square one that I thought was actually maybe a little bit better, but it just didn't, it okay. certainly didn't meet what I had in my mind when I was shooting it. And that's, you know, that happens all the time. What I have in my mind doesn't necessarily come out when I take the picture, but. Um. Good. Cynthia, I will pose the question that I did for the assignment. Uh, for the worst photograph, which you consider this one to be th your worst, that's fine. Uh, what did you what did you anticipate you would learn from this and how did you fail? Um, I thought I could get enough definition in there um, more in the form of lines instead of shapes. That's kind of what I was going for because I thought if you had the plastic, in a double thickness, you're going to get a little bit more or triple thickness because it was basically just a ball of it like put down on a light. Um, so I, I didn't achieve that. So that I would, it, I think it would have to be more high contrast in order to get there. And that didn't meet this assignment. So that was the part that I didn't meet, but that was the, also the part that I learned was I would have to go for a more high contrast type of image. Could you have gotten higher contrast by side lighting it? Yeah, but that probably, I my thinking there was that it would um, have introduced too many dark tones in it and then it wouldn't qualify as the light art. Mm. Okay. Does that make sense? Or am I off on yeah. that? No. Because it's backlit, it reduced the contrast between the various layers. Mm -hmm. um, if you had dialed down the the intensity of the backlight and 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 given it a side light of some sort or top light, uh, I suspect you would have gotten more contrast and might have been able to get towards what you wanted to do. Might be fun to experiment with that just for fun. Yeah. Yeah, I'll give that a try. Yeah, shoot it, shoot it, uh, put it on top of a soft box and shoot it that way. Okay. More plastic shots to come. <laughs> <laughs>
Boy, we're holding our breath. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that might be tissue paper because uh, of the Christmas. Um, it's interesting I, that it's a plastic bag instead. I actually read an article about somebody who had finds um, plastic trash bags on the street and then um, lights them with, I guess, gels or colored lights of some kind. And they kind of look like ice scenes. And their whole project was, you know, conservation and to pick up trash and that kind of thing. So that's what sort of gave me the idea. But um, there's, those bags would be that uh, opaque plastic. Right. And then they light it. So this is just clear. So anyway, that, that was what got me thinking on that line. I was also, uh, I agree with your idea that it, it may be a little bit better square because I do feel at the bottom, it kind of doesn't flow like the top does. It just is a very straight cut off there. And I, I don't know what the bottom of the image looks like, but it, it may be, um, as you said, very different and, and nice when it's, it's square. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, the square crop was on the left, so it was a lot more geometric looking. Right. Actually, if you were to crop it square in the middle, it kind of looks like sketched mountains. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. take it Take an equal amount off of each side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Put a moon that, there and you'd have moon over half dome. There we go. Japanese. Yeah. <laughs> Does the class want me to do another assignment that includes a cat? <laughs> oh, those were fun. I remember that. Yes. Well, remember, Roger, we can't go outside. So if you want a cat, that's tough. I can Perfect. loan you a couple of mine. Thank you very much, but no, thank you very much. <laughs> I could loan you mine I'd... as long as you'll take the litter box. <laughs> <laughs> True. No cats, sorry. Yeah, but Just you'd jump at dogs, one. wouldn't you? Yes. For the first 15 years, I told my wife I was allergic to them, but then she figured out that I wasn't. So that only worked <laughs> for 15 years. Hey, Chris. Yeah. Skip this one and the next one. I put a third picture in towards the tail end. Oh, okay. So this, you don't want to talk about this one either? Yeah. The, nice. um, I originally submitted these two and um, of all of the photos I took, this was the one that I liked the best, but I think I like the one that is towards the end of our portfolio today better. I, um, I don't know what it was about it. I just was never satisfied with it. I liked it. I do too. Yeah. I do too. It's, it's a little, pleasing. it's a little gray though. I think I would have lightened it a little, little bit more. Actually, I lightened it a whole bunch, but that was part oh, of what you? I didn't like about it. It was, it was ah. too gray. And um, this is an area where I walk my dog every day. And in the morning, especially this time of year, when the, when the light hits these grasses, um, the tops of them are just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I probably should have cropped all of all of the gray at the bottom yeah. out and tried it that way. And the blown out part at the top was makes my eye tend to go there also. So that that's mm -hmm. a difficult thing to overcome. Yeah. The, it does meet the criteria in the sense of being light because the grasses have a very light uh, feel. You, you, 
and I, I've, I've seen the same thing you have, John, when you go out and walk and you, the sun comes through those grasses and they just glow and uh, it, it's a beautiful thing. So the nature of the, the um, subject is, is very light. Thank you. John, shoot it again, but closer next time. Right, okay. Tomorrow morning, I'll do that. And make sure, and make sure that the, the, the tassels are backlit so you see the sparkles. Right. Uh, Get pretty close. These are backlit. Like that, that's so that, that's the, that uh, the way that I l love them the most. Yeah, but I don't see the sparkles. Don't see the sparkles. Yeah, the sun was, if, looking at that picture, the sun would be up and to the right behind yeah. but yeah. Try and rearrange your camera position such that if what is behind the tassels is dark, is the foliage and the trees behind. Yeah. With no sky. Yeah. Try that. See how see if you can get work it a bit. You know. Thank you. I'll be back at the end with one more. Okay. And go ahead and post it in your own folder so we can see it. Okay. Okay. So. Yes. Yeah. So I took uh, this picture, and I had a problem with this whole assignment. One, first of all, I was really busy, and I don't know why, but I've been swamped with things to do. And I had a tough time with my mind getting around the idea of what we were supposed to do. So I basically posted two pictures. This is the one I didn't like, which is the, or the one that I took, and that's what I did playing with it. So it's just basically this was out of camera. Just, I was looking to overexpose this and this antenna. I was just curious to see how the light shot would work. And I didn't like it in color, so I went to black and white and just changed the shadows and contrast and stuff. And not particularly happy with that either, but it's what I had. So, c'est la vie. Chris, go back one. Go back to your first. <clears throat> okay, if you look at the rectangular flat panel in the bottom left corner and also the ones above it, you notice that the edge is gone. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then go to your next. There yeah, I wanted, to, I wanted to bring those out. That's why I was playing with it. How did, did you do that post? Yeah. So the first shot was at, out of camera. That's out of camera, right. Over Overexposed, overexposed out of camera. Okay. And then this was post processing. I like the first okay. one better. I don't I know. I think I do too. Uh, I like the first one better too. I Good. couldn't figure out what it was. And uh, to me, it met the assignment. I, I just <laughs> love this. <laughs> well, see, I didn't know what the assignment was. I kept going, oh, I don't get it. I'm just really, I was like totally not getting in my head on this one. I really liked it. Yeah, I thought this yeah. was great. I All think right. that's a better of the two. I like the blowout. Okay. I, I'm, I'm with you guys. What about the, this up here, this kind of bluish stuff? Would that be better cropped off? No. I like that. Oh, no. no. I like that? Oh, it sets oh, like it that. off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a little vignetting. I mean, that's good. Yes. Takes you, yeah. Keeps right. you from going outside. Yeah. It, uh, I thought it was very interesting when I first saw it online, I thought this, this is not a vertical, this is a horizontal that got twisted around. It looked like a, uh, the edge of a, a pier or a dock or something. Oh, really? Okay. And it took me a while to figure it out. So I, I really like it. It's an antenna over a fire, yeah. uh, fire department. Yeah. It's on top of a fire department. So they got yeah. a bunch of stuff up there. Yeah. Was so that, that before or after? Your your wall banger um, was that before or after George? <laughs> <laughs> During George was laying on the ground, going, "That looks yeah. like a dock to me." <laughs> <laughs> well, I think 
I think this meets the uh, light art uh, requirement. It's very um, ethereal. It, it, it looks like something that's kind of from outer space that's just floating mm -hmm. around and, and there's this brightness and it's, um, and, and I like the blue a lot and the shadows on the, on the right hand side. I think it's a very interesting photograph. Good. Well, I took, yeah. I took I like three, or, three or four with different settings, and this is the one I like the best of the ones out of camera. But yeah, it did make me think of a spaceship or something for a while. Yeah. Too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The, Thank you all. Up. Oh, did you want to say something? Accident. Yeah, I did. Christy, go, go to the first one. There you go. The accidental composition of this, where it, the object is slightly off center, I think helps it. It mm -hmm. makes, to my eye, it makes the thing drift in space a bit, mm. which is kind of kind of cool. If you had centered it like the second photo is, mm -hmm. so go to that. See the difference? That makes a huge difference. This one's, wow. Yes. This one is yeah. much more. This one is much more static. It to me, it's not. Th this yeah. this is kind of. This is a brave, oh brave satellite, you know, or whatever, off to off to space, you know, whatever it's doing. To me, this one is. I have emotion with this one, but not the other one. What's well, more artistic? The other one is, as you say, is static and it looks like something you'd see a picture in a magazine. Uh, you know, yeah. this is this is what it is, be an advertisement or something. And the second one you crop the top on and right. I think that takes away from it too. Yeah. 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 yeah I agree. Uh, yeah. yeah. The first one is kind of helpless and lonely and drifting off into space. And to me, that's really kind of emotionally powerful good feedback thank you this is mine honestly didn't like any of my photographs under this assignment um but for some reason i like vanigans and uh this was parked there as old rusting but someone was living in it uh and it was against a very light blue wall with some sort of figures painted on the background. So um, it didn't quite meet the assignment because it has a lot of contrast in there. Uh, but I can go on about all the things I don't like about it. So I'll stop there. Bob, this is a photo you do not like. I didn't like any of them. It's hard to tell which I like worse. This was a <laughs> one I posted is better. I, I just don't know. I like this one because it tells a story. Uh, this to me has, you know, some kind of movement to it, some kind of story. And it is this thing moving. It's all, it's missing a windshield wiper. It looks like uh, it's beat up. I mean, it's, yeah. So I like this one, but I don't like it because it doesn't meet the pure light assignment like, uh, yeah, uh, Chris's and uh, and uh, uh, Cynthia's photos do, which I really like. So anyway, this is, is this the one a, I like. Mm -hmm. Is it a Volkswagen? So there's no real front. I mean, is or is there like a portion of the vehicle that comes out to the left? No, it's a Volkswagen. Nothing comes Volkswagen. out to the left. Okay. Yeah, and you can see the pop top up on the top of it with the white. Uh, oh yeah, barely. Oh. I oh, I thought that. that was on the yeah. wall. Yeah, I did too. Right. I tried to make that the same. It was oh. bright orange. It was bright orange. <laughs> the wall was kind of blue. So oh. I like the combination. You know, the interesting thing about the wall is every time I look at it, it looks like people looking at the van. For some reason, they look like people. I don't know why. That on the left especially they mm -hmm. look like little characters i don't think so, they were uh, yeah no well, it looks but like it, graffiti it, it just, but, uh, 
you know, it probably is, but it just gives that, I, I like that contrast and it gives it depth it, the, of, for the picture. Yeah, it's not graffiti, somebody, it's a painting, uh, a mural that they put on. Oh, okay. Yeah, it looks graffiti. It does provoke a lot of questions, you know, like what's going on yes. here and why? Mm -hmm. And so it really brings you in. Mm -hmm. Bob, when, yeah, the, you, uh, when you process this image, which you obviously shot in color, uh, did you, did, huh, you toned down by channels to get this kind of into this bluish gray thing here? How did you do that? Um, I believe that I selected in Lightroom, you can select a color filter to apply to a back black and white image, as well oh, as oh, yeah, the that. strength of oh, that. You shot this in monochrome. So you I'm shot sorry? this in monochrome. No, no, no. Shot it in monochrome, those filters don't do anything in Lightroom. You can't change that in Lightroom. You have to put the filter on the camera. This is a color oh. picture, but in Lightroom, you oh. can change it to black and white and then apply filters to it, which is a big advantage. Okay. So I think mm -hmm. I put an orange filter on it uh, to get the van less uh, dark. So it blocks out the orange. I believe that's what orange would do. Um, is that correct? It, it takes, when you put an orange filter on it, um, or it was a blue yeah. filter, I, I can't remember which. Anyway, blue so yes, it very dark. Yeah, it was the orange, I think. And then I um, declarified it and decontrasted it. And uh, that, that was it, I think, not much more. Cropped it, there's more white at the bottom, so I cropped it a little bit. And I think I posted it twice, so the next picture. Yeah, there. I, I was wondering if that was the same one or not. So. It is, I okay. made it. I didn't realize it until I didn't want to bother the you. Let's see if the <laughs> second, second one's, one's better. <laughs> Go ahead, Chris. I Number did. Two. That was the second one. You didn't even notice it. <laughs> yeah, oh, then there is another one. No, there is two. I'm I'm saying that as I move, they're so exactly this. They are exactly the same. You can't tell that I'm switching from one. This is to the darker. Other. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No, there like, actually should be another picture of mine, not this one. I, this I like the it. first one better. There's only two of the um, <laughs> of the van, and they're the same. Oh, really? Well, oh. that are that are next to each other. Maybe you put it in another place, or someone else posted uh -huh. something else. Or maybe it's after this one. I don't know. It, we'll see. This one's mine. And I didn't oh, know I was like <laughs> So anyway, that's the one. I like it. Better yeah, yeah. Nice. very, very good. Very nice. Yeah, it's really nice. Is this it is not, this a is wood? Not real. <laughs> so, um, this is one of those uh, lilies that are made of balsam, I think, wood. Mm -hmm. and ah, for years, I mean, everybody thinks they're real when they see them, and I just love them. So I put one against a black, a white background, and and took it out. <laughs> Very nice, beautiful. Very nice. Chris, yeah. um, on my screen, it looks cropped. Not on mine. So it, oh, it's full. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I don't know what you're seeing. So I'm seeing your screen and to me, it looks, it's like what the tip of the lily is right up at the top. No, um, not, not on mine. Not on my screen. Not on, my, not on mine. All right. It's my iPad. It, it, yeah. It, yeah, if you're seeing it on an iPad, it's probably the, the view editing, the view setting on your iPad that's it's trying to make it into fit into the iPad better. Got it. Right. Okay. Yeah, Mary, I'm working on an iPad and a PC, so it's correct on the PC and the iPad. It is omitted. Is there okay. a mic? Is there a way to edit that iPad um, view? Setting? um generally when you turn it but i oh. yeah if you if you turn it uh hey. turn your screen 
you, you know, oh. it'll show. Oh, yes, it looks better. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you, it may look better, but you look very skinny. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, I think this one, Georgiana, is, you did some a similar effect as um, as Chris's uh, cell tower, or his uh, whatever that was, the mm -hmm. antenna, uh, where it just kind of it, it kind of just disappears into the background, which I think for um, this light art is a very effective uh, technique. What I was trying to get. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You this succeeded. Was my, this was that movie that we saw last uh, last class with the David Bowie one. Uh, that that's this yeah, like homage to that. <laughs> <laughs> Except that his was dark. His was the dark art, and yeah. in, in my head, in my the, mind, the movie this is very light and very um, spiritual. Yeah. Yes. There's just enough yeah, that's have, blown out, but you can still see what it is. It's, it's yeah, really, right. mm -hmm. really well done. Yeah, I it like looks that very it much. looks like it's uh, painted. I have a friend who made me a daffodil that very similar to this, and that it, it, it was watercolored. So that's what this reminds me of. It's a lovely mm -hmm. watercolor. It's really yeah, absolutely. beautiful. Absolutely mm -hmm. beautiful. Not very nice. I was I was yeah. hoping it did and it did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that a winner. Wall. How did you light it? Um, Georgiana? How did I light it? Yeah. Uh, is it, <laughs> looks like it's from the side. It's from a north face. It's facing a north window. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm, so I'm uh, shooting from, you know, it's facing the north window in the dining room. It gives the best light. Very beautiful. Yeah, it really is. It's yeah. To me, the, the power of this is twofold. One is the simplicity of the image. Yeah. There's, not, there's no clutter at all, which really makes all of our images that much stronger. But secondly, I'm, my mind is engaged in this because I do not see the right-hand curve of the white petal as it right. curves around the, the stamen. And so my eye is trying to, my mind is trying to complete that curve. Mm -hmm. I can see it at the top, but then it disappears to the left. I mean, it's to the right, excuse me. And so my mind is constantly kind of grinding away, trying to make this a whole, a whole flower. And th because I'm failing in that, it's, it's, um, it's delightful. Keep you guessing. Right. I, this is a sidebar. This um, is part of a bouquet that used to sit in my office for a number of years. And I had finally had somebody walk in and say, how come you have these great flowers all year round? <laughs> 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 and I had to tell, well, walk over there and feel them. And he said, oh my God, they're wood. <laughs> <laughs> well, they are very, there's tulips also. It's tulips and lilies and they're all bright natural colors and uh, he said I had been looking at these for all year round I could not believe you had them that they kept so well. <laughs> so. We have an entryway into our house that's sh shaded we can never get anything to grow there so we put some silk flowers up there and I found out that my housekeeper had been watering them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's oh, odd yeah. we've arrived at a point with with flowers uh, that Oh, they're so good, they must be real. That's when you look at the <laughs> silk ones. And then you get real flowers in. It's, oh, they look so good, they must be fake. <laughs> Can't win. Georgiana? Yes. Uh, what, if, you, if this were the photograph that you chose to put in the book, mm -hmm. it would be nice with the written part that you included the little story about the. Um, I mean, about the about the uh, the flowers lasting so well, or, mm -hmm. you know. oh yeah mm -hmm. yeah just yeah. I mean that's just a thought. It might it it might not work, but it's an idea, a thought. Yep. Yeah, it's a definitely I, a interesting story. It was a I couldn't believe that somebody noticed them from a street like that. <laughs> well, 
I think, I think it's, of it's a, a great po- story. I think of a, it is a great story. I think of a poem when I see that. There's it's something that is so simple and it just, you know, like a haiku would go with that really oh, well. Oh, yes, I agree. Yeah, finally knew how to do that. <laughs> yeah, those are not easy. <laughs> yeah, no, they're not. <laughs> So I think that needs to go on your wall. Yeah, that's really yeah. nice. Yeah, it turned out so well. I tried the tulip, but it did not work nearly as well as this one. Mm-hmm. Well, this works beautifully. Yeah, the lines are gorgeous. Very nice. Turned out well. Thank you. Okay. Moving ahead, Roger. Yep. yep. This is my second one. Ah. Ah. So I don't know which one I dislike the most. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very bright red tree, and I tried uh, technically just a, a new a method I ran across on the internet to try to turn uh, your pictures into infrared type looking infrared, yeah. Im- images. But uh, it's very busy. There's no real story. I saw the lines leading into the black on the bottom left. But there's really, it's very busy and no story. So I don't like this one as much as the, uh, well, I don't like the, any of them. So this is consistent. Like less. At least you're consistent. You're consistent. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> This will not be in the book. I like the technique, though. It looks, it's interesting to see yeah. the different um, lights. And I darks. tried that on some on a couple of things that I had, but I wasn't real happy because I didn't specifically shoot for that. Yeah. Uh, but it does look interesting. Yeah. Yeah, with a bunch of trees uh, in a nice aligned landscape, it might be better. But for a single tree, at least it yeah. turned it white. That's about all. It took me a minute to figure out what it was. Um, it j- looked like a, just a series of patterns. And then, oh, there's a leaf in there. Would make a great jigsaw puzzle. It would. <laughs> yeah, right. You can do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> there, <clears throat> there is no center of interest or any means by which your eye is guided through this photo. So Bob, I really like it. It's, it's very much a failure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an overachiever, I guess. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you, you succeeded in putting in your worst one. Thank you. This is this is mine, Steve. We were at Bismo Beach, and um, self-explanatory. I lightened it up. It was a foggy day, and I tried to emphasize the white, um, even in the black of his uh, wetsuit. You know, I, I muddied that a little bit so it didn't stand out as much. I'm not sure it met the assignment. Um, in contrast to say what Cynthia did, but uh, I like the shot. Mm -hmm. Looks cold. (laughs) Very cold. Very cold. I like the way his foot's up and the reflection of him on the (laughs) sand. Steve, was it foggy when you did the picture or overcast? Yeah, misty, misty, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like it. I think it's, that's a, it's a good moody picture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think if that was your intent, you, you made it. <laughs> yeah, well. Uh, well, I, I think it's, a, I think you did really well. Chris, can you show, show the um, photo data? Uh, let's see. Where is it? That's no, it's not the one it. With the bar. It's, it's up. Yeah. 
Nope, you don't want to show all that, do you? I do. Okay. What I'm, the reason I asked for that is I'm looking at the waves and the lack of detail in the waves, which I believe because of posts, the detail dropped out to a certain degree. Because when this was shot at F8 and a very fast shutter speed, uh, you would have seen more detail in the waves. It's actually more successful this way because the, the surfer stands out mm -hmm. as if it was a, a very open aperture. Yeah, I, another, I removed yeah. the detail on the waves uh, to create this <coughs> light uh, impression. Yeah, if you lighten the photo, the, the darker portions drop away. So therefore, the de definition of edges of, of light and dark be become blurrier, which is what happens here. But if you look at the pier, the pier is perfectly, a prop, you know, perfectly exposed, properly exposed, sharp, all that. So it, it's the lightness in the waves that uh -huh. have gone away. Steve, how did you That's remove the, the detail in the waves? I think I think dehaze slider, oh. if I remember right. And you just did it on the waves, so you, you did like an adjustment brush. No, I didn't do adjustment brush. I did universal, oh. and maybe and also I probably lowered the shadows. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. Nice job. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, if the contrast had been high, it wouldn't work. It, that's my point, George. Oh, no, correct. it wouldn't. Have, no. Yeah, I think the editing really adds to the mood. It's really nice. Yeah. I like it. Thank you. It's a great shot in a uh, surf in a surfer shop, you know? But hanging on a wall in a surf shop. Valerie Jardine would also be pleased because you have the the motion of him walking right. rather than the feet together. So you got po extra points for that. Does Roger, does it remind you of a picture that was taken with film? There's an old, uh, it reminds me of a picture maybe taken in the 30s or 40s. Mm. I think it's, there's something about it that, that reminds me of that, but it looks like a film picture for some reason. Yes. One uh, other thing to consider was if you shot it a little bit, uh, well, a lot more wide open at, at two eight, that pier might have been more defocused and might have added something to the mystique of where it was and centered more on the central subject. Just, just a thought. Not a criticism, just a thought. I'd like to see it that way. It's a great picture. Yeah, it's really good. I disagree, Bob. And the reason I, I say that is because the pier is quite in focus and properly exposed and all that, to me, that it, it gives a lot more depth to the distance between the, the surfer and the pier. All of that water mm -hmm. appears to be quite treacherous. I like seeing the people up there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, just, and I think yeah. it gives it a, it gives it context, which yeah. helps to make it a storytelling. Mm -hmm. um, so I like the pier in there. 
What if never was, mind? What if there was just a little bit less pier and more ocean? Like if the if it was just shifted a little bit, is that better or worse? You think? Worse. Worse. I like it. Worse, I yeah. think the balance is really nice. Yeah. Yeah. I think it draws you into the photograph, the length yeah. of the pier and him walking in. Yes. I get the feeling like he's heading into the pier, not heading into the ocean. Mm -mm. Don't feel that. No, because the, no, because his his board is facing out at the same direction as the end of the pier. Yeah, but his shoulders are more towards the pier. Hard to tell because the body changes, shifts yeah. as you walk. Right. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see the before shot or before you edited it because I can't there's an awful lot of people on that pier in inclement weather. I don't know. <laughs> just what I was thinking. Well, you live by the ocean. You you have yeah. to walk when yeah, you, you just go. <laughs> well, okay. Okay. any day is a surf day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. <clears throat> Yeah, this is mine, and um, I posted it just to show that you can't make a light shot out of uh, anything. That there was so much contrast with in the uh, vegetation down below, and so forth. That it's kind of the worst of both worlds. It's it's a, I think a good shot in color. They're looking at the sunset and the sun is in their faces. Um, but in trying to make it into a light or high, de uh, high, high key shot, it, um, it takes away from what the shot was. This is taken from our balcony, which down below. With a telephoto? Um, you know, I'm not sure if it was, yeah, if it was just the, uh, what, 18 to 55, or if it was a bigger telephoto. Yeah, 250. Yeah. 250, 50, 250, yeah. And it was shot at, uh, it tells you usually what it was shot at. Uh, yeah, 50 to, 50 to 50 to 230 at 113. Yeah. yeah. 171 and 35 millimeter. Yeah. It's telephoto. The clouds look smudgy. Are those that clouds or is that the water? That's the water. That's the water. That's the water. That, again, that points out the same thing as in the other, as in the surfer shot, that when they were both at F8 and because you made it high key, it, it, it blurs the, uh, the details in the water, which you would have seen otherwise, I think. You know, actually, this is an odd situation. <clears throat> there oh. are... Uh, little plants, kind of like uh, a sea's version of uh, sagebrush growing up this high because it was a uh, very high tide, it was king tide. And there's all these little plants growing up high on the beach. I, uh, yeah, I took them out originally just to race them, but I guess that was in an earlier version because it's distracting. I think it's interesting that she looks like she's barefoot. I know. I was thinking of the same thing. <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah. they got sweaters on and she's barefoot. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> she's barefoot <laughs> with a wine glass. <laughs> yeah, my eye keeps going to the wine glass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's a white yeah. wine, but. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What you want on a cool day. Yes. <laughs> I keep going to this grading over here too. And yeah. Yeah. 
it's an interesting shot. I'm not <laughs> sure that I like it as a photograph, but it certainly is interesting. I'm going to move on, Roger. I think we got a lot to go through, and it's 11:20 already. 11:25. Somebody want to claim that? Sure, that's uh, mine. It uh, was taken at uh, windmills in Palm Springs the other day. And I um, did this black and white and colored the, black, the background in blue. Hmm. How did you do that? Lasso, lasso and paintbrush, right? Or paintbrush. Yeah. Yeah. Really easy to do. Um, let me stop before we get into the photo. This is going back to Bob's book as a landscape. You could see a square format. This would be about, oh, I don't know, maybe half of the height of the, the square would be the image. And the other half, one quarter and one quarter would be white paper top and bottom in a square format book. So be aware of what landscape will do. Especially one that wide. Yeah. So I take it there was some decent cropping at either top or bottom? Yeah, on the bottom, there were some um, solar panels below it that uh, didn't need to be in it. So I, I put it in to be 16.9. And uh, worked it that way. So um, interesting choice of blue uh, for Mike for the uh, for the sky. Um, it would be interesting to see if you had chosen a a non-real color. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, like purple or orange or an apocalypse orange. Yeah. Yeah, something different. It'd be fun to see what that looked like. Yeah, I'll have to test that out. I really like if the fact that you've done both on it. It really keeps me interested in the photo. Yeah. The black and white and the blue. My eye keeps drifting off to those three windmills on the left. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. all the windmills on the left are the newer versions that are uh, 225 feet high. And then these other ones are called Eiffel Tower that uh, are losing their strength and they'll they'll probably just be there as a ornament uh, in the next year or so. Not as productive. They vibrate. So I have a method, and I'm going to try to send it into the chat to take those halo that halo out if you want, um, where the sky meets the hill. You've got that sort of white halo, um, mm -hmm. and it works on most photos that where you boost the contrast a little bit and have that that halo. Um, I'll I'll find it and put it up there if any and take it or leave it, uh, just have to find it. That's useful, Bob. It's a Charlie Kramer technique, so. This is nice, it's a good shot. It's almost a photograph, Mike, that, uh, can, can be made disturbing because of it, it the clutter or yeah no no because of the subject it's very yeah unworldly mm -hmm. yeah especially when the big promotion on the wind electricity is um for clean clean air and cleanness and this is so ugly Mm-hmm. They're have very you, oh go ahead. Yeah. Have any of you driven, I would say, north of 
Antioch gone across that bridge up into, I think it's the Alabama Hills and there's that w big wind farm there as you sort of head north back towards Rio Vista. Yes. Anybody yeah. done that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There, yeah. There's, a, there's a bazillion windmills there. And it's it, to me, it's a very alien environment. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. I've seen this one too, and it also is going down to that Palm Springs area. This is, it's weird to see. Mary and I, a couple of trips ago, were traveling from, um, uh, where were we? We're traveling from Norway over, over to Sweden, across the Gulf of Bothnia. And there's literally millions of these little islands out in the Gulf, all of which have an elevation of about maybe two feet. And many of them would have one of these windmills planted on them. A very strange environment. Okay. And on the next Chris. picture is just total black and white and a little more upfront. It's mm. not as effective. Right. No. No, no. not really. Interesting. Yeah, the first one is more interesting. Mm -hmm. Especially with chartreuse sky or something strange. Yeah. The international orange. <laughs> yeah, something, something threatening. That'd be fun to see. Go do that and post it in your folder. Yeah, I'll check that out. Should Mike, you, you should be able to do it fairly easily because if you go back to the last photo, you've lassoed that area that you made blue. Right. So you could just take the paint bucket, do a different color, and drop it in. Go to yeah. the palette. Yeah, go, uh, to the, go to the palette, choose a different color, and poof, you're done. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be fun to play with that. Yeah, I will. You could do like an Andy Warhol where you do the same the same image and you do like 10 different colors for the sky. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so, Roger, just so you know, it's 1130 and we're not even halfway through. Okay, okay, let's I'll move on. Up. Well, Nim, shut up, Roger. Just tell me to go forward faster. So this is your <laughs> show. Faster. Well, on go each forward. show. Wow. Anybody claim Who's it? This? Mary, is this uh, jeans? Nikon cool no. picks. Mike. Nikon cool picks. No idea. Is that, Jack? Uh, is that Mike? Mike? The other Mike? See us? Mike number one? You're yeah. Mike number one. Okay. Yes. Mike Macias, I don't he was on earlier. He was on earlier, but he went he went away quite a while yeah. ago. Yeah, because he has he, oh. has, he has he has computer problems. problems. Oh, okay. His computer like shut down on him. Hmm. Okay. Well, it's from one Green Acres. On this, one quick comment on this and then we'll move. Uh, as opposed to Bob's photograph that doesn't really draw you in, this one does, I think, because of the perspective of it. You get smaller tags towards the back. I find converging I lines to, in it. Yeah, Amaya keeps jumping all over the place in this one. But with Bob's photo, my eye never was invited in. Shame on you, Bob. Now there's a reason yeah. I didn't invite Roger. I knew what it was, right? <laughs> okay, Chris. Okay, that's mine. I was, uh, I had several problems with this assignment. The first was I had a problem with the assignment of uh, <laughs> trying to understand what it was all about. Uh, the second was that right not too long after our last class, I had an endoscopy, which really knocked me down for about five or six days. And I wasn't doing anything. So this is symbolic. Okay. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> and then I went out and shot 
I don't know, maybe 25 or 30 shots that I was really looking forward to working with, and the card failed. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, they do that, you know, and I found that out the hard way. Mm. So this is the, um, I wanted the contrast in this, and I was looking at a composition, uh, but um, it's the handle on a kitchen cabinet, uh, which is Good. down at the bottom. It's nice. Uh, it looks like it's, I thought it was floating in space, yeah. some kind of ring. Yeah, that's what I thought too. No, you, no, no, you say what it is, I can see that. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry you told us what it was. Looked at that thing several times and said, eh, maybe there's a <laughs> photograph there. Uh, I thought it was pretty obvious it was a kitchen cabinet handle. Yeah, it's so good on you. So that. literal, Mary. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, I thought it was just one of the frames from your endoscopy. <laughs> <laughs> if it had been, I would be in real trouble. <laughs> I, actually, I really like it, George. Me too. Yeah, I, I like too. it too. Uh, I was trying for the balance with the weight on the uh, bottom right as opposed to the uh, shadow on the upper left to try to balance out the composition. And, um, it's a very dramatic kitchen cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> the lighting. Not be if you looked at it, if you saw it in person. Yeah. So are, this, I, is the, are the dark areas just like leaves from outside? Or is that what it's reflecting? Or? Um, we have a, a, a greenhouse window in the kitchen, and there's several oh. plants in it. And I think that's some of what you're seeing is the shadow from the plants in the window. Um, but it just it just added to the depth of it as far as I was concerned. Oh, it really makes it. I like it a lot. Yeah, I, I like Thank it you. too. The one the I don't like. <laughs> is in the lower right. Your eye does not leave the frame. Right. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's, a, it's very peaceful or static and, and, and that's it's said in a good way. Uh, it, 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 you're not, your eye's not jumping around as opposed to the last one. It was uh, shot in color and then this was processed in Nick. Yeah, no, looks good. It's really nice, George. <laughs> okay, want to do the next one? Um, these are the jets in our bathtub. We have a, a hot tub, bathtub, spa, bathtub. And uh, these are the jets in there. I just thought it was an interesting pattern. I'm not particularly drawn to it, but uh, because the only contrast in it is what was there and I left it in, uh, in color. Uh, so that was straight out of camera pretty much. It looks kind of like a face. Mm -hmm. but very wall-eyed if that's the case. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Um, this one's mine. Nice. Um, our, our ranch at this time of year, all the grasses have turned really, really light. And this is a, a dead tree. And I just wanted to, when you walk out there, it's very glary. The light <clears throat> is just overwhelming and it's very bright on your eyes. And um, particularly if you're fighting cataracts like me. Um, I just I recommend the surgery. Yeah, me? I do too. I do too. The surgery. Mm -hmm. Oh, I had the surgery. I need some YAG laser thing. Anyway, um, I just wanted to capture that feeling. And um, so um, this is an iPhone photo. And I did kind of um, lighten up. The sky was, the blue sky was actually pretty dark when it came out. And I wanted to lighten that up a little bit. So I just lightened up some of the darker areas, but not the, not the tree, I wanted that to be black. 
So, and just get that overwhelming feeling of kind of harsh desolation. Nice. I mean, I know it's the light assignment to me. There's a lot of light here, but um, it's almost not what you want in this scene. You want more trees and, and other living things. Two uh, comments. Very, very dramatic. Yeah. Two comments. yeah, very nice. Two comments. First, the amount of dirt is fairly limited at the bottom, which makes the photograph more successful. And number two, that little ditch leads to the tree. Mm -hmm. right. Leading lines. Oops. <clears throat> oh, to me that that makes the photograph <laughs> successful. Mary, you talked about having more trees. I don't know about that. This is just great with the one, the loneliness, mm -hmm. the desolation. It looks great. Yeah. Well, uh, the backstory is that area was gold mined, and there's very little decent dirt. And those ditches are where they washed most of the hillside down. Oh, so, oh okay. And so it's not really oh. growing trees. Mary, the only thing it's missing is a cow. <laughs> oh, I took a few that had some cows in them. <laughs> I took, I have a tendency to take a lot of, I find a scene and I take a lot of combinations. And so my next photo is one where I'm just kind of like, you know, lost control. <laughs> so that you wanted to put a worst one in rather than put the picture where I accidentally took a picture of the ground itself. I just put this one in. <laughs> but for some reason, I kind of like it, even though it's supposed to be my worst. So. Interesting. I like the sky in both of them. It's really. Just... Yeah, it fits the seat. The, this is sort of just like the original picture after the fall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, very 20 pictures that were street photos of people that were not necessarily the camera was straight, if you all remember his stuff. Uh, this one is um, a, a failure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, good job. <laughs> well, good job at being the worst, then, I guess. Oh, I, I kind of like it, actually. I <laughs> I don't know why it, it's so weird. It's like you know that it's off, and it's obviously off. So it, it's it, it would be different to me if it was tilted just a little bit, but having it tilted a lot makes it more intriguing to me. This is well, one you should frame, and then just wait for the comments when people come over and visit. <laughs> just just see what they say. It. No, if they try and straighten it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, see how many people try to straighten it. And Mary, I keep going to this dead. Is there a broken limb in the bottom there? Yeah, that's a broken limb. Yeah, I, I kind of like that in the first shot, too. I kept getting drawn to that limb laying on the ground, which helped with that desolation feeling of that shot. Yeah, this tree never, um, it's just recently died, which is why it's got all those dead leaves on it. Mm. I will probably take pictures of it in the future where they all kind of crumble off, leaving just kind of the, you know, the, the major. All right. Yeah. So. All right. Okay. Chris. That's, yeah. that's mine. Is that mine? Yeah, that's mine. I think, or is that yours, Rita? Is this no, is mine? That's yours. That's mine. <laughs> <laughs> this was done in color. And of course, everything at the, the trees were just vibrant red and yellow. And so I made it into uh, sort of a black and white cream um, picture. So, you know, this was not my favorite assignment by any means. And I had a hard time, really had a hard time with it. So um, that's, that's what it is, what it is. <laughs> so. 
Okay. If all of the assignments that I gave were easy, we wouldn't learn anything. It's not that it is, it wasn't easy. I was just, I, I think because I've been inside so much that it just, I, my creativity has just kind of gone out the window. And so uh, it, I always find it better when we're out and we're working together and somebody will say something and I'll see something different. But this, I really had to force myself to go out and to find something or to even look around the house. I did some stuff in the backyard. But um, this, this is, you know, it's just a lightened picture of what it was. So that's hmm. all. Hmm. My eye goes to the trash can. Yep. <laughs> and the figure next to it. Is there anything that's the, gonna, maybe that's the darkest drop spot in, in the photograph. Yeah, I know. Uh, but I, I couldn't ask her to take her coat off. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, people have dark pants on too. Uh, so it's, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Well, it certainly tells a story, you know, of where we were that day and uh, seeing all the people out. Yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, and it, I think the fact that there are so few people out mm -hmm. uh, at this time, at this time because we're not supposed to be out a lot and um, it's sort of the emptiness so well, but I that's like, it i like the reflections of the trees in the water yeah well yeah it was it was lucky that they showed up because that's the one thing i like about it but yeah it's it, it it's not a picture that i would you know certainly not put in a portfolio of any sort so, Next. 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 And this is my other one. So this this was in my backyard. And I know it's, it the dark is dark, but when I looked at a lot of pictures uh, on high key, on the you know, a lot of them were similar to this. So I thought, um, you know. That's, that's what I did. I lightened up the whole background and um, then darkened the blacks. So that, that's it, so. And what did you use to get the blue? Uh, that was probably, I don't know what I used. Like reverse <laughs> vignetting. Mm -hmm. No, it wasn't. It, it was, I went in and used, first I used was it DOX, uh, the yeah, docs? Yeah, yeah, DX, yeah. And then I used Lightroom. So I, between the two, I sort of fooled with it. So, but you know, I, I'm not happy with either of them. And so uh, George and I will, uh, you know, go together on this. That I'm not. I just I was I, I didn't enjoy doing this. So, just to be honest. So there we are. Okay. That one's mine, and uh, Roberta's right. We we had we had a hard time finding subject matter to be creative with, and um, so I just went with the criteria that you were supposed to be lighter. So that. That was about as light as I could do with this particular, this particular shot. Just to go back quickly to, to mine, the one picture that I really, really wanted was out on Bruceville Road, way, way out. And there was no place to park. And it was all the trees, it was an orchard and all the trees were painted white at the bottom. And I thought it was absolutely perfect. And it was, you couldn't park. I would have gotten killed <laughs> if I'd parked there. So uh, that's why this other stuff, but yeah, I know we, we, both of us had a hard time with this. Well, I was, I'm just not really sure what I was doing. I, I was just, I was really, I was really had a hard time trying to figure out the difference between this and the ones that we did last time because everything that I took 
really wasn't white on white, it was more grays. And so, I don't know, I, I, I struggled with this, I struggled with this one. Next. Thank you, whoever said that. Yeah, the lesson for white this was really bad. about the notion of how white, how white makes a difference in the image. You're paying attention to the light. In this case, literally. Well, this the 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 picture right out of the camera was so white. And I was having, I wasn't really sure which one I was going to use. The other one was just so white that it almost disappeared. And, but when I put a filter on it, this was more defined, but I liked it better. So I don't know if it actually meets the criteria of the white on it, but I like this one better than the, than the one that I took. I like that it shifted off a little bit to the right and not completely centered. It seems more balanced. It looks when, like I a... that when I took the picture, I was kind of looking up, so it wasn't really straight yeah. on. So I yeah. had a hard time trying to get it through. You didn't feel like you had to tip your head to see the, see the photo. And so I, I cropped it pretty good. Um, so that it would be more, more centered. But you can see that it's not really centered, or it's not really straight. It's more yeah, different. no, it's fine. I like it. It feels like a painting to me. Just the yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Looks like a watercolor. Mm -hmm. Kind of like Georgiana's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remember when we did all those photo realism, machine age pictures? Yeah. This, this falls into that category, mm -hmm. I think. It's good. Crashing. Okay, Chris. This was my um, final submission. This was the photograph that I liked the, the most, um, although I, I feel I've um, risen to, to Bob's category of, um, I don't like any of them, but what struck, I was actually going out to photograph something else and driving by this building, these, these windows um, caught my attention. And then when I was driving back, they were there again. And I finally decided to go in and just um, shoot some pictures. And what I liked, um, what struck me was how the, the grays accentuate the stark white of the, of the frames and whatnot. Right. I'm glad for such a lousy picture that I posted. I'm getting so much attention. Well, <laughs> Thank you very much. You're like the you're like the Pied Piper, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not quite sure I'm that complimented with this, but that's okay. I think this John, would be a much I more would, static yes. photograph if it were if it were not for the uh, the cropping on the left. Because they're, I don't know yeah, if those are hinges or what those are on the right and in the center, but the fact that they're missing on the left makes me wonder, makes me think about it. I uh, adds a real interest to it, as far as I'm concerned. Thank you, uh, John. The photograph is, is as an architectural photo photo photographer, the photograph is quite good. <coughs> what I would suggest is that you go to uh, in Photoshop, there's a, there's a tool that, you know, select all, and there, then you can drag a handle on one of the corners. If you look at the crop on the right, it does not parallel exactly 
the sash framing. Oh yeah, if I see what you mean. The, if you, the left is perfect, but if you take uh, and drag the, if you if you drag the thing, I think it's transform or free transform, something like that in Photoshop. If you drag the bottom right hand corner down, very slightly, very gingerly, you will straighten that out, and the photograph will be much yeah, improved. I, yeah, okay. Oh, thank you. I see that. I see that. Yeah. You might also, as you're doing it, go to show grid and put a grid up there so you can keep everything square. I'm gonna try that. I used a grid in Lightroom and I'm surprised I missed that right hand side, but you're absolutely right. You know, there's a lens adjustment in uh, Lightroom that can help correct some of that without having to go to Photoshop mm -hmm. and, and re-skew it. But um, yeah. I've used that on occasion. Didn't use it on mine today, yeah. and I wish I had. I'll go back. And I really it. like the photo, but, it, but it, the right-hand edge bothers me a lot. Yeah, I, I hear you. That a yeah, now that you said it, yeah. <laughs> It's one of my kind of pet peeves as an architectural photographer is that you, you try to keep stuff parallel to the front, to the edge of the frame. Yeah. Yeah. That and uh, if you're a landscape photographer, if you're taking a picture of a lake, you don't want the water to drain out to the right. Or left. <laughs> or left, you, you keep it horizontal. There's lots to play with in this photo. Good. Chris? Yes. Wake up. <laughs> I'm awake. I'm waiting for instructions. Saying my name is not okay. an instruction. <laughs> this is my uh, worst photograph, or one of my worst photographs. And I was going for a lightness, and I wanted to contrast the leaves up in the right-hand corner, but it's kind of blah. This down, where is this? It's at Sutter's Fort. Oh, okay. Hmm. Looks like splashing water. Mm -hmm. Right. I was. I had a lot of fun with splashing water um, because it. You get a lot of light through the. You know, light coming through the the splashes. But this was not effective. This this particular photograph was not as effective as some of the other ones that I did. It it didn't really do much with the splashing. So what did you learn? Um, I, I want what I, what I learned was that in order to get the front kind of um, blurred, which is what I wanted, but I want, but the leaves in the background needed to be in sharp focus. So I'm not sure how you do that. You focus towards the back. That dreaded manual focus. Uh, the dreaded manual focus, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next. Okay, next. <laughs> I like that. I like that. That's, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really good. Like that. Yep. Beautiful. Yes, yeah, this is a fabulous photograph. Who took this? That's my oh, that's thing. mine. Sutter's oh, Fort again, huh? Okay, cool. This is the one I liked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's, that's good. really nice. 
What's really I, difficult to achieve here, and Mary managed to to do it, is there's there's enough detail on that Adobe wall that you can still see it as individual blocks and so on, because it's so white. Otherwise. <clears throat> Did you bring up Absolutely the whites nothing. quite a bit? Uh, not much. I, <clears throat> I tweaked it a little bit and then I did a little bit of contrast, but I didn't, I didn't change it much. It was very, very white. So you didn't really need to, you yeah, know, it was, it was bright. The fact that it has one thing, again, the photographs that have been the most successful today are the ones, the cleanest ones have very little going on and yet they are the most powerful images. This is one of that group. Book worthy. Okay, next. Nobody claiming it or waiting to see what the reaction is first. <laughs> Whose fault is this one? It's not. <laughs> I have a Japanese maple that looks just like that. <laughs> Most of them do right now. <laughs> yep. Well, the interesting thing is the rest of the tree is blazing red. And this one branch may be dying or maybe it's um, drying up much earlier than the rest. I don't know. But I thought the shapes of the, the leaf clusters were kind of whimsical and made me think of dancing leaves. Mm. Um, although the, the back does give more contrast than I wanted. Um, I couldn't find a way to have more white. You couldn't see the leaves if it was more white. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like all the curves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just thinking that I like all the curves. They all go in the same direction too, which mm -hmm. is important. Creates more harmony. That's repetition. Repetition. I would crop out the, the branch to the right mm -hmm. and I would crop out some of the bottom as well and just have those curve things because that's the that's yeah. the story of this image. Making it more square. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, okay, more square, but yes, but but that really the, I'm distracted by that that uh, branch behind to the right. Yes. In particular. I looked at that too. It's it's like an a different picture because of the width of the branch and it takes away from the lightness of these leaves. Yep. What, Kim, would you shoot this with? Uh, with my cell phone. Cell phone. It might have made it so more simple if you'd shot it like on the portrait mode. I don't know if there was enough distance there though. Uh, portrait mode generally softens everything. Um, so I don't think the, um, 
the sharpness of the veins and all the, the rest of it in the individual leaf tendrils. Um, I'm not sure I could capture that in portrait. But it would certainly be worth playing with. Chris? Yes, go. Go. And that was, the previous one was my best of the whites. This is my worst. This is white, but not light. Yep. It's a painted rug on the patio. That herringbone pattern is white paint on a concrete patio. And the darkness is the soot from the fires. I never would have guessed that. Wow. Mm -hmm. all the texture yeah it, it's an interesting picture i sort of see a guitar in there <laughs> see a guitar. The thing in the front oh, I, see, I see that yes <laughs> um i see a space <laughs> alien <laughs> yeah with the two eyes yeah right yeah, you can make all kinds of whimsical creatures out of this. None of them very happy or whimsical. I see a kitty and a puppy. <laughs> and a puppy. Thanks, Josh. Go on, Sam. <laughs> okay, Chris, go. I, ha I have four of them in there because I wanted to and about the, the white and the light. And the, the sun is coming from the right uh, top corner. Uh, and this is the pond. Um, and I wanted to capture the, the light, the white of that. And when you, when you get to the other two or the other one, uh, it's much more uh, obvious that uh, that has a, uh, that's, that was my attempt at white. Is, is using the light from another source. I mean, a, a broader source. Oh, and, so this one? And this, this one, the first one was in Elk Grove Pond. This is in Land, Land Park um, mm -hmm. Pond. Uh, and then go to the next one, Roger and Chris. So this is, this is my um, interpretation of uh, the white uh, perspective, I guess. Because uh, I liked it the way that the, the saucer uh, the where the water is dripping and then uh, the, uh, uh, the reflection in the water of the light that's coming through from that uh, fountain. Uh, so anyway, that, that's what I liked about it. But it doesn't come anywhere close to what anybody else did. And go to the go next back to Pardon me? I'll go back. This to me, to my eye, this is a, a, a more powerful foil because the white is really the only thing that is contrasted against all of the green color. If you go to Michael's second one, it becomes, go one more. It, the, the contrast is not there. No. That's what I see. Yeah, I agree with that. Next. And I like th this one much better than the, the original because of the, uh, it blurred the, the water from the, uh, the fountain and it made a really bright, bright spot 
uh, uh, of the water uh, in the light is the light is coming from from uh, uh, upper the well almost the upper left hand corner of the of the image. Um, so I that's I just like light or water in uh, in the composition. None of none even neither of which meets the the uh, after looking watching every, looking at everybody else's work none mine doesn't come anywhere close to fulfilling the uh, the objective of the field trip. Do you tell in those water droplets? It's really nice though. I like that. Sorry, Roger. No, this is an exuberant little photograph. Uh, the the, the, the the energy, the zest off of that little fountain is fun. So if you shoot it again, uh, go take a, a little model submarine and put it in the water in front of it. <laughs> sure, Roger. I'll go right. looking for it and go trapes it around out in the pond in land, land park. <laughs> Okay, Chris, do we have more or are we done? I don't know. Yep, that was the last one. That was it. Okay, cool. Okay, to recap, we're going to be doing a next class starting uh, early February 10th. Early February. I are we doing the 10th or the 3rd? Well, pick a date. We'd... I don't know. That. Well, when, okay. School starts. On the eighth, so Renaissance starts on the eighth. Tenth is fine. So, does anybody here know how to cook walleye? Cook what? No. I fried it in a pan before, but that's the only way I did it. I was out in Boundary Water. We didn't have much to use yeah, for seasoning, bought, though. Yeah, we bought a, a cabin north of Duluth a couple of weeks ago, and so we're gonna. I'm gonna have to figure out how to fish. So, uh, anyway, the, the lessons for this next semester, I'm gonna try to make them more uh, traditional art oriented. I'm kind of missing doing that. Uh, we've done these lessons, which I think have been fun uh, and have provided some, some, some insight into, into art, but less structured. So I'm kind of go back to maybe more of a sequence of things. Uh, if I can, if it, I hope I don't bore everybody with that, but uh, we'll go from there. But that's the idea is to try and... Uh, have each lesson build from the onto the next. We did a little bit of that this time with Grizel, dark art, and then light art, those three connected together. Color field was part of that too. So so uh, hopefully we'll we'll do fine next semester. So I guess the first lesson is the 10th, that's a Wednesday. Uh, we'll set it up, uh, Chris will set up a repeating Zoom thing, I assume. And, uh, yeah, uh, we'll yeah. just set that up through the, um from the CSUS side, I think, but yeah. there's, there's some question on CSUS on how they're going to be sending, setting it up. There may be that when you register, it automatically sends the, the meeting um, oh. login. Um, there was some discussion at a meeting earlier this morning that I had with them about that, but um, we'll, we'll let you know. Yeah, I assume well, thank you, Roger, for setting up the class again. This was a struggle, and uh, we commend you for what came out of it. And uh, I I'm, do I'm appreciate glad to hear it. that everybody had some pain. That's that's important. <laughs> Thanks so for beating us up, that, Roger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we did that one semester on, on conceptual stuff, and uh, you know you had to take five pictures, one of which had to have a cat in it. I don't know if you guys remember that one. Mm -hmm. not some yes. Of you do. yes, 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 uh, I do. And I found that that was very successful because 
everyone complained. To my eye, if you're doing stuff like that. So I'm going to try and do, do some things that are a little more oddball this next semester. And hopefully by next fall, we'll be able to get together again. And the consensus is the class is closed. We're not going to invite people to audit, correct? Anybody? Right. Right. Most of you. Okay. I will report that back. I've, I've for the last two semesters, they've been asking me to open the class up and I've refused. No, other classes are limited. I don't see why it should be an issue. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think part of it, George, is part of the part of that is because we've been pretty much closed for eight years now. You know, we've always had a wait list. We've only had, you know, less than 20 people. And like Cynthia is a good example. You were on Cynthia, you were on a wait list for two, three years or something like that, right? Oh yeah. We finally oh, kept wow. Yeah, and you kept pestering us to get into the class. So we, we finally said, okay. And you finally <laughs> relented, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was literally that because we had, it was a big struggle as to how many people to put in the class. And it was it's because of what we just went through for the last hour and a half of critiquing each other's pictures. If we had 50 people, we'd be here all day. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. Oh, yeah, no. Either that or the critiques just wouldn't mean much. Right. Yeah, that's a nice picture. Next. Okay, next. Yeah, that one's good too. Next. That, yeah. that would be the level of discussion. And that, that's, that's what good. that's what was the, the, lar the larger class with the first one that I attended, it had 40 people in it. And we uh, and we would see, you know, picture and another picture and another picture and it was not helpful at all. So this this so, is this is this is so much better. Having I, attended a semester or two of that first class, I learned from that, that that we cannot have a huge amount of people and have any meaningful discussion. Yeah, which I is agree. great. I agree with, with it. Yeah. And Roger, exactly not the cast. Exactly why we're limited. In that. Roger, not right. the cast and excursions like on your classes. Very happy. Like but but I learned more <laughs> from the critiques than I do from the class. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's how it is yeah. supposed to be. And I'd like to wish everyone a very happy holiday. Absolutely. And maybe we'll be in, we'll be in touch before the end about the book. And um, am I miss Claire's hospitality? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. me too. Oh, I know. Yeah, uh, you're so kind. Yes, yeah. and her salad. Stay yeah. safe and stay safe and a very happy holiday to you all. Yes, you, you too. too. Thank you too, Mary. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everybody. Okay, see you all. Be in touch. Roger, right. you need to fix that blue patch on your orange wall. You need to finish your painting of that wall. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bob. All right. See you guys. Next hey, Roger. Semester. Don't we'll go yet. About the Roger. Book. Bye, bye. Roger, bye. do you want me bye. to? Bye. Do you want me to? Um, Trim this at all and send it out, or how do you want to deal with what we recorded today? I you recorded. I would put it put it out because that way Gene Gene can see it. For example. Okay. Okay. I, all right. I would so we'll just kind of leave it as it is without any editing. We'll just oh, do the no, whole thing. No. Yeah. Okay. I'll Sounds admit. good. I'll yeah. do that. Thank you all. Okay. See bye you. Bye. bye. Good to bye. see you, Kim. Glad you're there. Thank you. It's great to be back. <laughs> you look, you look, you look fine, Kim. Yes. Yeah. Everything good. Uh, things are going well. I only have a little tremor in my right hand, but no paralysis. No. Oh, that's that's thank God. That oh, magic good. Uh, breaker for whether you have a prospect of full rehab. So. My schedule is loaded with rehab people coming every afternoon to put me through the traces mm -hmm. and keep me using the walker. Um, and I am trying to have a good attitude about the walker. 
you know, without having to manacle it to my leg or something. <laughs> How do, how's your dog handling the walker? Is she okay uh, she, with it? Yeah, she's okay. I haven't tried walking with her, you know, holding her close to it on the leash yet. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm not quite sure, I'm not released to drive yet, so I haven't tried putting the dog and the walker and me in the car. Mm. That's another mm -hmm. whole gig. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, fun. oh, joy. Yeah, but... I, well, you're I'm, looking good. Yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad to see you're, you're looking well. Yeah, and you sound good, good, too. You're not... You know, it doesn't sound like you have any problems talking, so that's great. I have a friend who spent a lot of rehab just trying to get her voice right. Back, yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, one doctor in the hospital did say, "Don't you notice you have a lazy right eye?" And <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Well, I don't usually just stand and look at my right eye, but I can tell you, it's always been a little lazy." <laughs> <laughs> that's funny or my left eye is perky <laughs> <laughs> i like that better i don't have a lazy right eye. i have a perky left eye <laughs> right. so you know they're that's looking at time. you to see if you are dead on symmetrical yeah right and as i know it no one is absolutely symmetrical no. yeah yeah it's a matter of whether you can move it or not that's right there you go so, and well, Chris, I, thank you. you. I I am able so, to talk and I am able to eat, so the essential things are working. Yeah, that's good. 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 Well, it was good to see you, and we look forward to seeing you in February, and Indeed. even up and moving better. Yes. Well, my bucket so, list Chris, is to be twirling. You know. Good. All right, guys. I'm going to end the meeting. Good chatting with you. Okay. Thanks. Talk to you later. Thanks, Chris. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for your help. You're, You're welcome. Great. Bye.